Welcome back, everyone. I am so excited to be here. We are Poe on the Call, and I'm Chris Rivers. I'm Mandy Mack. <laughs> yes, and we are here with the amazing Donna Carno. Hey, all. It's good to be here. Yes. <laughs> Thank AKA you so much for being Donna here. Kong. I'm yes. so excited. Thank you. <laughs> what are real names? We are all Instagram handles. What is, what is yeah. a real name? <laughs> Yes. all the time people meet people in new york all the time and they're like oh like you're you're Dr. kong i was like yes that is me that is me <laughs> so great love it. thanks for having me y'all super happy to be here hell yeah, yeah for sure you for coming all righty <laughs> do you want to start it off or i could start it off um i could start it off <laughs> yeah let's start with something well, easy to meld us in <laughs> <laughs> Well, I remember, um, so the first time I ever saw you perform was at PSO Northeast this past time. And I was in the judges seat. I wasn't judging for you, but Jolene turned to me and she goes, wait till you see Donna. She has no bones in her body. (laughs) (laughs) It is a vicious lie. That is a vicious, vicious lie. (laughs) But then like you came out and I was just like, oh my gosh, like her leg is behind her head. Like she's spinning so fast, (laughs) I don't understand what's going on. And it was just the most amazing performance I'd ever seen. Um, So I was like, thank you. Mostly wondering, like, where did you come from? (laughs) Yeah, like, where did these legs come from? Um, Well, thank you, thank you so much. Um, Yeah, um, probably will need knee surgery in like ten years, but let's see what happens. (laughs) Um, uh, But you know, we were loving life until then. Um, Things are going great. Um, but yeah, I, I, that performance that you're referencing at, um, PSO Northeast is a piece that I've like really fallen in love with. And I still think I've continued kind of like exploring and I'm, I'm actually competing in nationals in August and I'm bringing back that same, it's this like progression of like a marionette, um, essentially becoming free, um, and then like learning how to like use their bones, if theoretically, if they have any, <laughs> yeah, moving their bodies, uh, their body through space. Um, and then at the end my friend Gina is another marionette that comes on and I like teach her how to free herself with her scissors and it's like a whole moment um but yeah the reason I I really fell in love with that piece so much is um I come from like a postmodern dance background so I discovered pole dancing when I was studying dance in school um and I am really interested in like uh like dynamics and musicality in a sense of like releasing excess tension like so much of the work we do in pole is like so bound and held and like muscular because it like as a function it literally has to um and so I've always been really interested in this sense of like efficiency or like literal like release technique or like how do I like kind of relax my my joints but when I'm in the air um and then also just like interested in like this like kind of disjointed physicality or like showing a shape and like breaking the shape um And so I was like, okay, this is what like aesthetically I'm interested in right now. It's like, how can I put this in like a digestible narrative or in like a digestible thematic element? Um, And I was like, oh, of course, like those, it made me think of like the, you know, like the little dolls with the little button underneath. And when you press the button, all their bones like collapse. (laughs) Yes, exactly. Um, I'm like very inspired by those and like the inflatable tube dancers. Those are like my favorite things (laughs) in the world. But yeah, so yeah, that's kind of where that came from. But all those histories kind of have informed me to like come up to that place. Um, So I feel like my my background is like kind of funky because I come from more of like an artistic, like, um, I don't know, like experimental place. It's a lot of moving on the floor. And then it's been me like for the past nine years trying to figure out how to like move my body in the air, Um, which I think I'm like, I'm figuring it out slowly, but but, um, it's like a fun kind of collision of those two worlds um, that I like kind of come from and hail from and um, and still like kind of refining and exploring. Um, But yeah, that's, I'm really happy that you got to see that piece because that was like, it's one of my all time faves. Hell yeah, it was so amazing. I was just like, oh my God, I don't know. <laughs> Super inspiring. And then, you know, when we had the chance to bring you to our studio to, to teach us, I was like, hell yeah. <laughs> so thank you so much for, for coming to our studio and teaching our students. Absolutely. And our online students so too. <laughs> yeah, they're great. It was so much fun. It's so great that y'all have that, um, like, especially with the pandemic, I feel like we've all kind of figured out like there's so many ways to do the thing. Like there's so many ways to, you know, teach or so many different ways to like have access to like, um, to like a, like a student base or like share your knowledge base. Um, and it's really nice 
to see a structure where it's like accessible for so many different individuals and like so many different like geographical locations. And then also like in terms of like safety and all those things like that too, it's, it's really lovely. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. And that, that toy that you said that you squeeze in and like drops down. We <laughs> yeah, have the, one. The, 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 <laughs> we wait, have really? one in our front lobby. Cause it's like, it's my icon as well. Like, wait, I feel like that's what my body feels like. <laughs> <laughs> just a pile of bones yes. just a sparkly like, pile of bones <laughs> that's yeah, amazing a unicorn, a unicorn that just like <laughs> it just melts that's what that is <laughs> I've never touched it I saw it I was like what is this <laughs> yeah you should it, uh, yeah push underneath it it's I don't know I it was like me <laughs> oh my god I love wait, it wait that's awesome <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing oh, our value gosh. systems align our value systems yeah. align <laughs> Or I guess also our aesthetic agendas. All those things. Are yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's so great. Oh my gosh. Well, also um, recently you posted that you were, um, there was a post that you mentioned that you were really proud of your shoulder progress. And I know like shoulder, <laughs> shoulders are like a big issue for a lot of polars, including me. So I, I was wondering if you could like share a little bit about maybe like how you strengthen your shoulders or made them so amazing so you can do all those things. You're so nice to me. Thank you. Dear diary, um, literally dear diary, because it is, um, the shoulder mobility is like, oh my God, you guys, it's just, it's been like a very long journey for me. Like before I started pole dancing, like my shoulders, I literally like, they would like fall out. They would like fall out and like go back in. And they're just in terms of like hypermobility, it was like an absolute disaster. And it's something that I, I think has really also helped me because now I have access to a pretty large range of motion, but it's like how figuring out, and I love pole because it's such like an active range of motion. You have to be able to muscularly support the, the direction your bones are going. Um, so it builds like a really awesome, like active strength. Um, but what's tricky is it, and if you already have that kind of like facility, then it's like great. Then you just have to figure out like proprioceptively how to organize your body in space. Um, but and but it makes it a lot harder when you're also like, okay, I need to literally like figure out how to put my rotator cuff <laughs> together to make this all happen. So I've navigated all kinds of like rotator cuff injuries. I've navigated um, some serratus injuries. I've like, I've torn like the ligament between my radius and my ulna from not being able to pull up enough with my top arm and like a butterfly. And I was like collapsing too much in my bottom arm. Like there's, there's so much that we ask of our upper bodies. Um, as like the majority of like our weight bearing in pole. So I think there's a lot, there's a lot to be said and a lot to talk about. Um, and I think I, I talk about this a lot too, where there's, there's a sense of like immediate gratification. Like we live in a world where we see like the thing on Instagram or we see like, oh, uh, you've been doing it for one year and you can like do all these things, but you don't know what happened in that person's life for like the 15 years before that. So um, I think it's like, it's so important to emphasize that like we're all very much like on our own journeys and then we all need we, we all need different things, um, it, it, especially because like it's such a highly individualized practice. Um, pole dancing, we're all like, you know, we all have our different movement histories. We all have our different ranges of motion. We're all navigating our different injuries and we're all just trying to organize our bones around this metal stick <laughs> all at the same time. Um, so yeah, just I think just respecting the form and respecting and not underestimating how much work, the, like the work is a part of it. it. Like it's hard and it should be hard because it's it's, challenging and demanding on the body um and so I think that's like where it also that that emphasis comes a lot through in my teaching where it's like okay there there has really clear progressions for someone to get to a place where they can do this like safely and effectively um especially for like handspring based things or split grip based stuff um like pre-engagement, working on progressions that maybe don't feel as glamorous like because especially for twisted grip like a lot of people it's easy to like kind of kick up into the position, like dump into the, into the position and then really damage your rotator cuff because you're the, you're asking like the structural integrity of like your skeleton to hold you rather than the muscles around your joints to support you. Um, so it's like kind of working through those, like really sometimes, um, I don't want to say boring, but sometimes like less glamorous progressions of like, okay, it takes some time in order to weight bear in this way. Um, but, and then eventually through time, through repetition and through like, just like training in a smart way and like being patient, which is like the hardest thing to do ever. <laughs> um, then you eventually can like get to that place. And it's like, not always the answer that people always want to hear. Um, 
but I think like for me, that's, it's just been a nine year journey. It's been a long time. Um, and it's been a lot of consistent work. Um, I will say like starting to train handstands, like during the pandemic, like completely changed everything for me. Um, just having like that access to like push and full body stabilization. I'm still, it's still such a work in progress. You guys, you have no idea, but like in order to, to find that kind of balance from pulling and pushing it, it's helped a lot in my handspring training. Cause I don't, ask so much of my top arm that it's like going to fall off like I it's a it's a group project everyone's working together um I don't know if that if that helps <laughs> or if I just went on a TED talk tangent but <laughs> I could talk about shoulders all day <laughs> no no I super appreciate that that was that was perfect um I mean like yeah. I'm so glad you also mentioned like we come from different backgrounds and even though you know like like I even know I was like oh I've been training the same amount of time as you Donna but like I'm not anywhere to the strength that you are just because I recently found out that I was hypermobile in like all of my joints. So it's been like trying to figure out how to stabilize, like you said, before like doing the other things. <laughs> yeah. Totally. Totally. Yeah. And it's, and it's like, yeah, I think that's, that's what's also such like a gift for teaching, especially for something like this, but it's also such a, why it's such a challenging thing um, is because it's not one size fits all. Like there's a million ways to get to the same place. And like, I, I, when I was studying dance in school, I was also pre-med. So I come from like an anatomy background and like, um, have a big passion for like the human body and like applied anatomy for pole dancing. Um, and like, there's a lot of things that I think that, that as like coming also from like primarily also a teaching background is like, we could all talk a little bit more about like body proportion. Like if you have longer arms, it's easier for you to bind around the pole or bind around your other body parts because you have literally more real estate. <laughs> yeah. Or if you have, if you know proportionally between your lowest rib and your hip bone, you have more space. It's easier for you to side bend. It's easier for you to find like, um, potentially like a more secure contact point than someone that has less space between their rib and their hip bone. Like there's all these different like kind of proportional elements that they really do affect like what we're doing and so that I think that also means that like it's it's exciting because that's what makes us so individualized but it it also means like as a teacher you have to have an arsenal where you're like okay you can get into this into this position in a variety of different ways and this might work better for your body because of this and this might work better for your body because of that and I think that also just comes with like time and practice and a little science and experimentation <laughs> a little bit of science um but yeah that's that's another whole part of this industry too right yeah, yeah, no, for sure. And that's like you said, the whole lot of patience too. And just being like, okay, <laughs> everyone's <laughs> body is totally different, but we can still do this thing. Yeah. <laughs> totally. I love, that you, I love that you say that because you're right. We're always constantly learning when we have to be open to that learning based on the different body types. I'm learning something every day. It's just fascinating. <laughs> totally. <laughs> Well, where do you, um, what is the studio that you teach at? Uh, do you teach at a bunch of different studios or? Yeah, um, I, right now I, I teach um, full-time at Body and Pole, um, which is in Manhattan. Um, it's uh, in Chelsea. Uh, and that's where I very much feel at home. Um, so um, I originally, I'll just give you like a drive-by of like my life and like my history with Body and Pole. I originally started pole dancing in 2013 in Champaign, Illinois, in the middle of the cornfields. Um, uh, I, I joined a club called Illini Pole Fitness and it was, um, I went to University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign and it was like students teaching other students how to pole dance. <laughs> and it was like so much fun. And also no one knew what the hell they were doing because it was 2013 and we were like in the middle of the cornfields and like, you know, whatever. <laughs> um, and like pole dancing looked very, very different then than it does now, um, almost like 10 years ago. And so, it was amazing though. It was so fun. I was terrible at it. It was so hard. And I just like wanted to get better. So I kept working on it. I was staying dance. I was like, this is great. Like I, I'm so humbled by this entire thing. Um, and I continued working and working and working and it became a big part of my movement practice in my life. Um, and I got some grants from the university, from the college of fine and applied arts to go study pole in New York. So, um, over the summer, like of 2016, 2016, um, I got to, I did a summer semester at NYU Tisch, and then I also studied pole um, at Body and Pole. And so that's kind of where I feel like I anchored down like with a community and with like a, a, like a consistent practice where I constantly felt so like humbled and like this like really sense of like stretching <laughs> as a practitioner. Um, 
yeah, uh, that was also like a, a challenging year for me in other ways. Like my, um, like my dad had passed away like th- three months before I moved to New York and I like knew no one there. And so it was like, oh my God, like, this is miserable. Like, what do I do? And so I just like kind of threw myself into movement, um, to be very honest. And I feel so thankful that I did because I, I feel like I built like a sense of purpose and community in that space that has really kind of anchored me there and, and driven me. So after I, I ended up, so I, I did all that studying, whatever, that last summer before I graduated um, from college. And I, I did like this like crazy thesis. I'd made like a 17 minute pull piece with like four women to the sound score of a metronome over the, using like seven poles in my pole studio. <laughs> like, like it was crazy. We were like moving through this, but it was like a whole, a whole thing, but like very much like, I feel like it was uh, my time exiting Illinois was like very much a launch pad of like exploring experimental structures with pole. Um, and then I moved to New York to join the work study program at Body and Pole. Um, and during my work study program, I got hired there to start teaching full time. And so I, um, I teach right now like intermediate to advanced levels. And I also teach flexibility training. Um, and I've taught there since 2018. Uh, and it feels like such I don't know, it's such like an incubator uh, because there's so much, there's so much space, there's so much resources, there's so much like passion and knowledge base there. Um, and yeah, at the same time, it's it's just like, has been like my community of students, my community of teachers and my community of friends. Um, so I primarily teach there. I'm also starting, they're bringing an aerial pole. I'm so excited. I'm, I'm like, we have to do this. So we're gonna start teaching or having aerial pole on the schedule starting next week, which I'm really, really excited about, which is another form that I also engage with in with win <laughs> win with uh, um, but either way so yeah I, I teach there primarily I also teach private sessions I have my own like LLC and company which I started um, during the pandemic when everyone got laid off of all their jobs and there was like major instability because it, it happened like, like we can we can talk about it and I'm glad that they did like they survived you know they couldn't have supported all of us through all that um, and like I think it was like a really empowering moment for me as a teacher and as like as like a business entity, like realizing like, oh, I, I need to also have my own, like, uh, how do I say? I need to like find reliability and, and outside of structures that are, that are offered to me. Like I want to make it happen for myself just as much as I want to be a part of these other spaces, you know? Um, and so I have like my own little, my little S corp. It's very exciting. <laughs> One woman show. <laughs> but um, so that has been really exciting. So I teach online classes as well, online privates, in-person privates, um, uh, both in the city and then, you know, all over the world. And then I've also been starting to travel a lot more doing some workshops. Um, so that's also a big part of, um, my excitement for teaching is like building community larger than just like in, on this Island that is Manhattan, <laughs> like, like, like building a lot of connections with people all over the world. Um. So yeah, so yes, and then more. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> love it. I absolutely love that. Um, how, um, it brings me into a separate question, if I yeah. may. How do you like balance doing it all full time? Like I'm trying to get there full time and then sometimes I'm like, oh my God, why, I don't know if my body could do this. <laughs> Yeah, that's a really good question. I mean, yeah, it's, it's sustainability is tricky and like, um, su- sustainability, like artistically, but then also physically, but then also like, <laughs> um, like financially, like it's all, it's all tricky to navigate. Um, at least in, I can speak to my experiences in New York. Um, there's, I feel very thankful for Body and Pole also because it offers me the stability of like having health insurance and I get like dental care because like, I teach there full time and they had get offered benefits to certain structures, which they've here Johannes and the owner has worked very hard to make that happen. Um, so I feel extremely thankful for her and for that. Um, and New York is a very unique entity because I can teach classes at 10 o'clock in the morning and at 8 p.m. and I can do a gig at midnight and it's like, and that can all happen, hopefully not in the same day, but it all can happen because it's a big fucking city. So like, that, that that sense of sustainability, I feel like I can I can have um, because of geographically where I am. Um, but then there's also I've I've found just like with the pandemic, like there's so many ways to like structure your life in a way that like works best for you. So if like you really want to like prioritize like teaching a bunch of like private sessions and like just booking yourself out through Zoom all day, I think it I also it takes time to like get that kind of sense of. Um, 
like a staff, like it takes a while for people to even be like, who are you? <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, which is also a process in itself. And there's like no right way to do it, I guess. But I think it's like also being based in a really huge city. It, it helps because I have, I get like thousands of students a month. Uh, um, and a lot of them are consistent, but I also get to meet a bunch of new people. So it's, yeah, it's, it's kind of tricky. There's no like right way to do it, but I, I think it's it right now, like what I'm fighting to find is like the, the, the tricky balance um, of like equal parts performer, practitioner and teacher. Um, so it's like, I continue to feed like my creative, my creative mind. Um, I continue to like perform or like share that art in different like contracts or different variety shows or things like that or competitions, um, uh, which also then helps build awareness of like, oh, who are you? <laughs> like, what's your leg doing behind your head? You weird. <laughs> like right and then you come teach workshops in my studio <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, and then also teaching which is in my experience at least in New York is way more lucrative than performing to be honest in New York does not pay of what it should at all um in terms of like even like I mean for more like kind of circus-based contracts it's much more like fair and then even for um like corporate stuff it absolutely but like for like nightlife variety things it's like hilariously you'd be shocked <laughs> like, again I'm I, it's I think everyone kind of knows that and there's trans transparency about that um unfortunately but yeah it's just like you need to find the right balance that will feed you artistically and like emotionally but then also like financially it's like how are you paying your rent <laughs> um so yeah there's no right way to do it but I definitely feel like I'm getting closer and closer to um closer and closer to the right balance I'm trying to at least that's awesome. And you like maintain your, your body health, which I find like fascinating because it does take a toll, like being active all that time, which is incredible. It's always a learning process. Thank you. Yeah, I, I think teaching full time has also helped me a lot because it's made and like over time, like it all has taken a lot of time. But like, I like the like when I teach, I always make myself because I'm not like on stage and like when you're on stage you're like oh, let me, I'm not going to show you this split but I'll show you this split it's like you know like you can work on your other side and so I always teach and train and show the combo on both sides even and that's it takes some time to be like because originally you probably don't trust like one side as much as the other um especially if you're teaching high level skills you can always do the prep on the on the on the less dominant side but then if you need to show it like slow motion or if you need to show it a hundred times and you're fatiguing, you probably want to use your stronger side. So I feel thankful for spaces like body and pull and for being able to teach full-time a variety of levels. Like I feel like I've been able to maintain more balance in my body because I'm, I'm, I build into my schedule, which I would a hundred percent not do. If I didn't do this. I a hundred percent would not because it would be too much emotionally or physically, but like putting in the work on the other side, um, which I think has helped a lot. Knock on wood. <laughs> And that's that's a good example for your students too, because like everyone needs to get balanced on the the right and the left, even though you know, like you said, it's sucky. We don't want to do it. <laughs> totally, and they know they're like, oh, <laughs> and I'm like, yeah. yeah, I didn't do. You have to do it, <laughs> right? Yeah, <laughs> that's so funny. So, that's um, I, last year I was training for nationals, and it was like it took a big toll on my body, but. So do you have like a training schedule of how you're, you're balancing the, <laughs> the nationals training? Oh, you're doing this, a, a similar piece though. You're, you're just re yes. revamping it. That's good. <laughs> yeah. It was like a lot, like in teaching and, and doing all the other things too. Yeah. Yes. I, yes, I need to get my shit together, but yes, <laughs> I've also, I mean, to be honest, it's like, I think I, I feel very thankful for like being able to perform consistently in New York. Um, and I've taken the same act that, or the same piece that I've created for, um, that I created for Boston in November. Um, and I've been continuing to like explore the character and explore the work on aerial pole, which if anyone has ever tried aerial pole, it is literally so fucking hard, but it's so much fun. Um, you literally like feel your brain fall out of your ear, but I also like, I like to spin really fast. So that's my own problem. Um, but I feel like that has like kept me conditioned. It's kept me like kind of in the world of the piece. Um, and I've continued like refining those skills. I just need to like remember. And, and the other intention is to like, continue to challenge myself and make it even harder or harder for me than it, than what I offered in November um, to, to up level what I'm offering um, or how 
I, yeah, because I, I competed in 2019. Um, I, I'm from Chicago originally, and then I, I competed back in, in CPC for PSO. Um, and I was like, I got um, strep throat the Monday before the comp, and I was on like big girl antibiotics. Like, I was like so sick. I was, I like couldn't talk. I was like, this is gonna be a disaster. I'm gonna go last place. And like, shockingly enough, I won. I never won anything in my entire life. So I was like, okay, cool. And, and I had, two or three months, it was the end of May. So literally it would be like two and a half months. I was like, great, I'll build a new piece, which I kind of, um, I don't know if I regret, but I, I think I do. I think it's like, sometimes we put a lot of pressure on ourselves to like, I don't know, like constantly like reinvent, reinvent, reinvent. And I'm, uh, and not that it's bad, but there's like so many circus artists who are like, okay, I'm gonna do the same 10 skills for my entire life and you better believe I'm gonna be amazing at them or like, in nightlife and variety worlds, like you do the same act for like 12 years and it's not gonna be the same from day one to year 12, but like that work is so heavily researched. And I think that like that there's value in that and being able to like really sit inside of a world for a while and it can evolve, like that world can evolve, but like you don't have to, like I'm challenging myself, like you don't have to make a hundred new dances over and over again forever. <laughs> Take a break, enjoy. <laughs> Um, but long story short, I need to get my shit together is the, is the answer to that question for, for figuring this out. But I'm like, I'm like doing the work. I just need to do like the deliberate, like the deliberate work, the deliberate practice. <laughs> oh, no, you, if you're, you're performing enough though, that I think that is like the most thing. I mean, for me, that was like the least amount of practice that I had because I was just doing it alone. Um, but yeah, performing in front of people. Yeah. You're going to be amazing, by the way. And I can't even yeah. imagine what, like, you're going to transform this piece into. <laughs> it's kind of a yeah. bonkers piece, so I'm excited. I'm excited. Yeah. I love how you talk about that you don't try to focus on, like, going crazier. You try to focus on taking what you already have and building from it and going crazier that way rather than extremely. It's, it's like you said, it's really hard to do that. I, it, it kind of makes me think about how I do, how I pull and how I always am trying to reach for the next cool thing. And now I want to just kind of take it back and focus and build on that. It's inspiring because you know, a lot of people don't do it. We're always trying to, like you said, go to the next big thing. And I think totally. it's social media that does that for us. It does. And it's also, I, and it's like this sense of like qualitative, research rather than quantitative and I think that and I'm, I'm it's different if you're like competing in like a championship comp and even if you do like it's PSO like there's no there's like rules but there's like also like kind of no rules it's like you have to do what you're doing safely you have to do it well depending on how like challenging the transitions are depending how you know x y and z um like the musicality the character like there's more about that for for championship stuff but what I'm competing is like in an artistic category where it's like clarity of concept musicality um and then there's other like weighted factors but I don't know at least like the, the the techniques are a container like the techniques are a container that you are filling with like qualitative um elements with emotive qualities with musical musicality with um different like applications inside of that form um, and I think uh, like sometimes we were like, okay, like, let me do this triple sal cow backflip. Let me do this. Like, uh, I don't know. I don't know any other ice skating terms, but like, whatever, all this stupid shit. And like, um, and, and we can all, uh, like, I want to incorporate like things that are challenging for me as a practitioner and me as a performer, but at the same time, I want to like qualitatively, like let it live to like a full place. Um, and so and like, and even like the devils in the details, like hitting all those like musical accents, like, you know, like uh, it's actually really funny the time that you saw the, the marionette piece that we've been referencing. The first time I did it without a mask was on stage. And like the majority of my notes was like, the emotive qualities were very consistent and like look at other ways to like evolve that character or evolve the emotive qualities. And like, that's an amazing, that's an amazing series of notes because also like I, we weren't allowed to in the studio space that I'm teaching in run it without masks. And so, and that's a huge part of it as well, right? It's like, how are you taking someone into another world? Um, and so, 
yeah, like I'm really excited to like continue refining that work. And then also at the same time, push my physicality um, in a way. I don't know. It's very funny. I went to, um, I went to, it was like, a, it was a sports comp uh, in Vegas in 2018. It was like connected with Pole Expo. Um, and I went and I saw the comp with my friend who's an aerialist. She's a hoop artist, um, a, a lyra artist and also silks artist. And she's won national competitions. Like she's very like established. And like, this is like a big sports comp and you go to worlds, you know, if you, if you win and like, there was like, and it was also hot. It's like Las Vegas. It's August, you know, it's a swimming pool. And so, um, but like all these people like kept falling out of their flips, like almost like landing on their face. Like there was very consistently, it's like a professional thing. Right. And like people kept like eating shit. And she's like, are you sure? She's like, if that happened to me when I was like in my hoop, if I like fell out of my hoop, like people would be like, what's wrong with you? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like there's something I think <laughs> honestly. And it's like, I, I think that's with poll, especially because the form is growing so fast um, and Instagram is like informing so much of the shit that we're doing. And like, and that thing that's beautiful because it's this beautiful sharing of knowledge and sharing of this world with people all over the world. But um, I think that sometimes like everyone can like benefit a little bit by like slowing down just a bit, you know what I mean? Just so that way we're not like falling on our faces and like trying something that maybe is like, it's good to try things that are hard. It's important to fail in a safe way, but like maybe you, you don't put the triple sound cut back flip on stage if you don't hit it all the time. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like there's there's a lot of that happening right now. And I think that um that we can all we can all like learn how to like slow it down just a bit, which is an oxymoron because I don't know how to slow down, but <laughs> yeah. and I think that's true of like all pole dancers. I think we're just all like because we're so excited when we get a new trick and and we love that feeling and but yeah we need to like enjoy the trick enjoy the trick on the other side uh, enjoy <laughs> the trick yeah. maybe tilt it a little bit this way maybe with a flexed foot I don't know yeah. <laughs> stylized <laughs> yeah it's so yeah. true it's so well, true you um so you you mentioned too that you like like love spinning really fast and um. <laughs> Did you always, were you always able to spin fast or do you train to spin fast or how do you, do you have like a spotting technique that we can all benefit from? <laughs> That's great. Um, <laughs> um, I, like for pole or aerial pole or, or both? Both. <laughs> both. Okay. Nice. Well, I've been, I, cause I, a little bit of background for folks, with, um, I guess no one really knows of any of this or whatever, but, um, I've been, I've been pole dancing for nine years and I, um, I started aerial pole a little about a year ago. Um, so it's been like a short journey and it's been like a wild one. Um, and I, I have like a really, I don't get nauseous very often. Like I'm very solid stomach. I don't really get dizzy. Um, in turn, it's more about like kind of doing things like it, that you feel really confident with when you're spinning really fast. Um, because like you need to feel anchored and like having clarity and like what your contact point is, how you're activating into the pole. Um, but I, what I tell my students is at least, and what it works for me is like, if you try to like spot the world, like it's just, the world is moving too fast. <laughs> Don't do it. You're going to get so sick. Don't do it. You just have to like, kind of let the world like wash over you and just like, kind of like either look at your own body or the pole and just like, kind of go for the ride, you know, plus add lights, fog machine, crowd sounds. It's like, it can be very disorienting. Um, and especially for aerial pole, because it's not anchored to the floor and it's such a centered apparatus. Like you can really feel like the G force, like Top Gun Maverick has nothing on aerial pole. <laughs> like, you know, it's like, it's going to be so ridiculous. Um, I just read a New York Times article yesterday about their process. Like they have like 6.5 Gs for like this new film that's coming out. Um, and all the actors, it's real. It's not CGI. Like they have the actors like in the planes, like in these jets. And they would like all be like throwing up everywhere and be like, oh, this is a catastrophe. And like, to be honest, if you can imagine that, but like on an aerial pole, that's like pretty much it. Um, <laughs> Um, but yeah, especially for aerial pole, like you just have to like, kind of like let it happen to you, which maybe isn't super helpful, but like, uh, to be honest, like you just have to like, let it happen to you. Um, in terms of controlling the spin, the amount of like pressure, you y'all know this, but for people listening who maybe don't pull dance, it's like the amount of pressure you, you press off the floor determines how much, like how much spin you have, like the harder you push off the ground, the faster you'll spin. And the faster you go from out to in or to, towards center, the faster you'll go. Um, so I think it's also like creating a calculated, um, 
pull math, like a calculated uh, <laughs> uh, sequence. So it's something where you're like, okay, I know I can maintain the speed doing this skill because I feel really confident in it and I'm strong enough to support it. Um, or I know I need to be slower for this skill set. Um, or when I reach my leg away for this skill set, I will slow down. Um, yeah, so there's definitely some pull math involved there. Uh, <laughs> science, we're all scientists. <laughs> right, we're all, we're all physicists. But that's I interesting it, you yeah. mentioned too, I didn't really think about like how it would be different if you're on an aerial pole because when you're on the static pole, you're revolving around it always. But on the aerial pole, you can also like be with it. <laughs> yeah. So it's a, probably it's a completely different feeling. Completely yeah. different sensation. Well, it's because it's also weird because like you can never quite like, I guess you can be at center, but like because the pole, like the pole technically is center. And mm -hmm. this is how we create static rotation, right? Is you can never be, this is a pole. <laughs> I have my arm up and I'm like, <laughs> you can never be in the center of the pole. And so there's like a literal, mm -hmm. It, there's um what do you what do you call it there's like there's a um there's like a fault in the form like it doesn't it's not it's an imperfect form and that's how like because we can never be at center on a static pole it creates what we call static rotation right but for a, on a spinning pole you constantly especially on aerial pole you constantly feel this like dissonance where it's like I'm not quite at center but I'm also not quite far away enough and so you kind of feel this like like twilight zone of like bullshit <laughs> I don't know how to describe <laughs> but it's like it really is the most humbling sensation you can have in your brain ever it's very I highly recommend you try it sometime come to New York come to class it'll be I definitely do want to come and try it I'm just imagining myself like going please come back please come back <laughs> yeah off stage oh my god that sounds like the ride of a lifetime you would love it, that Chris, might, Tom. Yeah, that might be my new favorite hobby. <laughs> Let's do it this summer. We have to do it. <laughs> yes. Oh, my goodness. Yes. Body and soul. <laughs> Come vacation. And do you, is it, like, do you still have to wear, um, like, our regular pole clothes, or do you wear something stickier? Or? Oh, for aerial pole. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay, this is a great, a lot of people actually ask me about this because I, I work on a silicone pole, um, which is similar to kind of like Chinese pole. It's like rubber. Um, it's a similar diameter. I have a 45 millimeter. So it's the same standard diameter in most like US based equipment. Um, a lot of other aerial pole artists use much thinner ones, like 38 millimeters because it's easier to grip. Oh yeah, I know. You see that crazy bullshit in Cirque du Soleil and you're like, wow. And it's actually because it's seven millimeters smaller. Uh, um, but it's true uh, but either way I use um, silicone um, just because especially if you're going really fast if you're like 20 feet in the air like you I at least feel safer <laughs> to, to have my skin cells adhere onto the pole but I'm to be honest I, I don't know if it's because I've used my equipment a lot or it's because I just don't feel anything anymore like I don't I don't really get burns um, I don't really feel like a crazy pulling on my skin like my skin fatigues faster on a silicone pole um but most people are don't like they I usually wear like a, whatever like a, G, a piece of dental floss and and um I don't know a, a little top or whatever it or pasties I don't care um mostly because of the work I'm doing is in nightlife but I'll usually wear like standard pole wear which is like a sports bra and shorts or whatever you want to call it um but a lot of people will wear like pants or a shirt or cover their bodies um, because the silicone really pulls on their skin. Um, it also depends how broken in the equipment is. Um, I, I don't like the sensation of material being pulled by the pole, um, just because I feel less secure depending on also what I'm doing. So I would much prefer to, to just not wear anything and lose a couple skin cells. But I always joke, I feel like my pole has like an exact DNA replica of like every pole dancer in New York City. <laughs> it's like a lot of people have gotten on it, but it's like, I have like, I can make an army, an army from these skin cells, you guys. I can make an absolute army. <laughs> it's so I ridiculous. love it. <laughs> yeah, I didn't even think about that. You're right though. Like you, it's silicone and you're just like dancing at it. That's a burn. <laughs> Usually that's a bird. <laughs> I yeah, love the 38 amazing. millimeter poles though. Um, when I used to strip and got into pole dancing, there were 38 and they were, oh my God, fucking fake. <laughs> oh my gosh. I've never felt <laughs> so, much oh, so, so much easier. Oh, so much easier. easier. <laughs> uh, could probably do everything. So much easier. 
<laughs> yeah, it's it's so much easier. But it, I actually yeah. now that you were talking about this though, I, I do remember like I for one costume I had like these fish nets and I was like great mm. and I like did this like like stomach hold and the f- the fish net literally turned into like a cheese grater and like literally took off like a layer a layer of skin on my abdomen like it took a month for it to come back because it was like yeah. goodbye. <laughs> So yeah, I would recommend no fishnets unless you are stronger than I am <laughs> um, or, or it's not a major contact point, then go for it. But yeah, I would not recommend fishnets on a silicone pole. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> Words of advice. <laughs> I'm just like thinking of it. <laughs> I know, I'm like, no, thank you. <laughs> it's a lot. She's greater. Yeah, it sounds like a motorcycle road burn. Yeah. Pretty much. You just had to throw some gravel in there and it would be it. <laughs> Thank oh. you. <laughs> um, well, what do you use for um, a pole, pole grip to make you stick to the pole? Um, <laughs> uh, dry hands, pretty much. And I don't really use, to be honest, like I, if I, I'll use dry hands like a bit or um, I'll put eye tack like on my elbow. It depends on like what temperature it is though or like how cold it is. And I've like done, you know, circus contracts where it's, um, in like the end of September in upstate New York and it's like freezing in a circus tent and you're like wearing whatever, like 12 pairs of pants and like jumping up and down and like jacking off the pole. So it gets nice and warm. So the metal is really warm for your body. Um, to be honest, like heat for me is the most important. Um, and then I've also done contracts where like I'm in the middle of a bodega window in like July and performing for 90 minutes in the night. And it's like, it's 95 degrees in New York. And I'm like, okay, I'm going to die. (laughs) So like there, and and then it's just dry hands everywhere and um, just standing in front of your fan. Like to be honest, it depends a lot on the temperature for me um, and how warm my body is, how warm the equipment is. Uh, But generally speaking, I'd always rather it be like a little too toasty than too cold, like always. Same. I think Chris is the opposite. Really? Do you get toasty? Yeah, oh, <laughs> I I get real toasty. I, only because like I automatically run like really high, so like my tolerance for heat is low. <laughs> you would not do well here in New York today. Two hundred degrees. Oh, no. You would not do. You would cook like an egg on the sidewalk. <laughs> like even in the class, even in the class we um I took with you in the workshop, like I had to pace myself because after a. Um, doing a certain amount I was just like dripping so I would have to like kind of just like dry myself off wait and then go back to it <laughs> this is great though it means you're drinking water like this you're hydrated yeah. like, <laughs> let's frame it, let's frame it. Yeah. <laughs> that's excellent Very it's true. so funny we, we ask everyone about the pole grip and the everyone seems to always be using dry hands I wonder if it yeah. is it have you tried other things or um I, um, I have it's accessible. <laughs> yeah, I like, I actually loop it. I'm a brand ambassador for loop it pole, which is a Slovenian uh, pole company. Um, they like sent me a new kind of grip to try that I've yet to try out, but it's like for, it's like for your body, um, rather than your hands. Um, uh, yeah. Um, Paulina actually gave me this like crazy, like Russian super glue that I don't know what it is. <laughs> that I'm still trying out, but it's, it actually is like working. Okay. Um, I've had other people, like I've taught workshops in Michigan and this woman, um, she's like, I really love this. And it's like, it's like a gun grip. It's like for like a rifle, but she uses it for like pole dancing. And I'm like, all right, <laughs> like, I'll never buy this, but I'll try it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, it, I, I've tried a lot of different things and generally speaking, I found dry hands the most helpful for me. Um, and then I tack for my elbow if I'm doing like pops or some crazy elbow shenanigans. Um, but what's cool about silicone pole, um, you don't use any grip. It's just rubber. So it's like, it's just there. Um, if you feel like a lot of like residue on your hands, you can like wash your hands. So, and that generally helps at least for my body. Um, but yeah, that for that, you just don't really, you just hold on tight. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, um, I uh, that loop heat pole is it is it the powder puff one or is it a brand new one? I love that one. When I first, I, I mean, that's actually, the one I use. Yeah, I love that one. I haven't gotten one. Thank you for reminding me. I haven't. I ran. It, my puff has puffed out, and I need to get another one. Um, no, but they sent me this new one. Um, it's called Hydro Attack. Hashtag Hydro Attack Pole. Um, and it has this really nice piece of art on the front. Um, 
but they're trying, I think they're considering to uh, be like to work in partnership with them. Um, but yeah, it's hydro attack is what it's called. So it's aggressive. <laughs> um, Where's yeah. the gun grip? <laughs> um, should we find out what it's called? <laughs> it's pistol pro grip enhancer. Oh my gosh. That's not that fun. So it makes you hold onto your gun better? Yes, it does. <laughs> it certainly does. <laughs> That's You're something like, I'm not whoa, familiar whoa, with. Whoa, whoa. Oh, shit, I know. Can you imagine? Wild no, stuff. Okay. I don't think you should have a gun certificate if your butter figures really bad. <laughs> I know. Um, it is Maybe we could start marketing the pole grip to the gun community. Maybe we could. <laughs> I think dry hands, someone was telling me that dry hands is like, is more like for football and like shenanigans. Like it's not actually for pole people, but then like all, all pe pole people use dry hands. Yes, I heard that too. <laughs> Wait, okay. Also, I've literally collected so many, you guys, this is ridiculous. I've collected so many stupid grips from all of my clients that are like, you have to dry it. And it's like, go. One of my students, she uses Gorilla Gold Grip Enhancer for golfing. And it's I like, actually love that. Have you used this before? Okay, so it's like super tacky. Yeah. It's like, it's like, yeah, I don't know if I, I would lose all my skin cells if I have any left if I use this, but like the idea, it's like, it's like I think for your like legs and for your arms and stuff. Um, and it kind of feels like eye tack, but it's for use on hands or gloves for your grip, for your golfing. Can yeah. you imagine like you're golfing and you're like, <laughs> oops. <laughs> yeah, that company has a couple different ones. The powders are really good. Like they make things for golf or rock climbing. They're pretty cool. I like Wait, really? Have stuff. you used it for pole before, Chris? Yes, I've used a few of their stuff for pole. I like it. Yeah. Wait, this is cool. wild. Amazing. Yeah. My, my friend Leslie like uh, swears by it. She's like, this is it. Like she'll call the golf store. <laughs> whatever that is. And she'll be like, do you have it in stock? I'm buying the box. And she'll like get the whole box and like go nuts. Oh. That's amazing though. I'm always interested in finding like new, new types of grips. We had an episode about it because we were talking about like the different ingredients in them and oh, like cool. how we put them on our bodies, you know, every single day in like cuts and stuff. It's crazy. Yeah. And I recently found out I was allergic to one of them. I broke out in spots all over myself and I was like, what the heck? All over my contact points. Oh, no. <laughs> that also is like adding insult to injury because it's also just like it's painful it probably like it's itchy and then you're like okay here's a metal stick on top of all of these other things <laughs> ridiculous but it's wild. there's several things we can try at least that we can with our different skin <laughs> this is true there's no shortage of grip aids there's no shortage yeah. unless there was a supply chain issue with, in new orleans mm -hmm. and then there's no dry hands but other than that <laughs> There's no shortage. <laughs> There's none at all. <laughs> Excellent. Well, what would you say was your um, favorite style of pole? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> it's hard. I, I mean, I love, that's why I love this so much. It's like, there's no shortage of like, there's no shortage of like kind of entry points of modes of expression um, of like, just like very, like this form is still very much being like, it's like being created, you know, as it's happening, um, which is really cool. Um, my background, like I really love like dynamic low flow. Um, I really love like kind of the sensation of almost like partnering with the pole. So this feeling of like weight sharing with the apparatus and like kind of flying through space, it reminds me of the same feeling in like a modern dance class when you like fly across the floor. Um, like I, and like Chris, you took my workshop, like you know that that's kind of like the sensations that like we were chasing a lot. Um, yeah, it was so fun. Oh my goodness, it, it, it definitely has me. It, it definitely has me experimenting more with it because it made it. It made me think of low flow very differently. That's awesome. Yeah, and it's like just so there's and there, um yeah that just like kind of sense of like um I don't know the the floor being an apparatus with the pole and so all those kind of movement opportunities lower there, um and then like aerially I I love just like crazy like transitions and shapes passing through spin pole. Um, yeah, just, I, I love like kind of like transitions that make your eyeballs kind of be like, excuse me, like unexpected or things that um, just like a kind of unique 
I don't, how do I say, like just like different kinds of transferring of contact points. I talk a lot about with my students and I teach a lot of like open level classes. So we start in like an intermediate place and we kind of progress some more advanced options to, to connect the material. So when I taught spin at, at y'all's space, um, at Pull in the Wall, I, I like offered some, here's a shape, here's a shape here's a stupid transition to get into that shape and like throw your leg between your leg and catch it with your big toe. Like, and that's how it gets more advanced, right? But the more you know how to like enter or exit a skill set, the better you understand that skill. Um, so I, I really love looking at like skills and transitions on spin pull and like re-understanding a technique or re-understanding a skill set by finding like a new bonkers way to get there. Um, and it like, I don't know, I feel like it like builds neural pathways and it like, it's just humbling and challenging and so fun. But yeah, I would say those are my favorite. And I'm just like a contemporary dancer. I'm a contemporary mover. I really love um, having access to my feet. I've I've had a lot of projects where I've danced in heels or had to, I really had to dance in heels. And I, um, it's not for me. It's something that I can really respect. I can really respect so hard I feel like a newborn gazelle but I I I like to feel my feet and have access to my feet <laughs> um just for my background I was gonna ask you if you if you dance in shoes because I was just imagining how amazing that would be but you don't like it <laughs> it's it's on the internet somewhere there's some places I did like I did this whole contract I was in this crazy show called seven deadly sins in New York City it was an off-broadway show I co-starred with Cynthia Nixon um if you know her and uh she, it was it was wild. Um, but yeah, I had to dance in heels nine times a night, six nights a week for like two months in this show. Um, and I got like so much stronger, like, holy shit, it's so hard. They're ankle weights, like goodbye. Um, but yeah, really humbling stuff, you guys, really humbling stuff. Oh, yeah. Well, where awesome. do you, where do you see yourself um, in a few years? Like, what are your plans for the future in poll? Oh, huge existential crisis. Good question. Um, so it, it's fine. Um, I'm, I mean, it's, I've gotten to a place where I feel like I didn't even anticipate. I had no idea that I could even be in. And I feel so incredibly grateful to like be able to do what I love full time. And uh, it's just, I get to constantly like uplift people. Like I, again, like kind of going to call back upon that, like that dream of like equal parts being a practitioner, performer and teacher. Um, and then inside of also being practitioner, like I, I love building art. Like I love building work. Um, my dream for next year is to actually start a company. So like one of my longer term goals is to have like my own like aerial dance company or aerial pole, um, not aerial pole, but like pole dance company. Um, and like work with individuals that kind of have similar like movement aesthetics and um, some similar histories or not. Um, and like create some group work, um, which I have done in the past, but it's just harder between the pandemic and New York City schedules and all those things, it's hard to it's hard to sometimes make time for that. But I'm like committing to myself like 2023, we're making time, you guys. Maybe even 2022, who knows? Um, but that's one of my big goals. I like want to travel all over the world to like do what I love and also see the world. Um, so I'm right now I'm currently planning like a European tour for this fall. And I'm I'm just hoping it doesn't stop there. I just want to keep branching out to maybe compete internationally. Um, yeah, just, just, just be more of like, kind of like a, in a, in a global sense. Um, and like continue also being here. Like I love, I, I am pretty sure I'm going to die in New York. Like I love like being here and I want to always like leave New York to come back to New York. Um, but yeah, I see myself just continuing to try to, to try to find that balance between equal parts performer, like pra uh, practitioner and artist or, and teacher because teaching, to me, it feels like the biggest gift. It's the biggest responsibility. It's such, it's such a challenge. And it's so fun because you get to like have, have people access something that they didn't know that they could do. Um, and it's such like a, a beautiful sense of like trust and like dedication. Um, and so, I don't know, I think a lot of people are like, oh, I want to be like a big performing star. And like, that's something that I it would be so cool. Like, it'd be so awesome. But I like the real gift, at least like to me is like, is the teaching and like the process of engaging in the form critically, like nonstop, because like, I, I just like, I love the thing so much. Um, so I feel very thankful to be able to do that um, every day as a teacher. Um, but yeah, so I, if you couldn't tell, long story short, I have no idea what my life's gonna look like in five years. But let's, let's see what happens. We're just gonna keep on keeping on.
it's going to be exciting no matter what. <laughs> <laughs> That's so exciting. Like the Europeans for congratulations. I hope that works out. That is, oh my God. So I have I'm like pretending, <laughs> Chris, I'm like literally pretending like I have no responsibilities in New York. It's like so problematic. I'm just like, <laughs> I'm like, I can be gone for two months. And I'm like, and everyone else is like, are you, are you sure you can be gone for two months? And I'm like, yeah, why not? Like, it should be fine. Um, should be what else okay. are we going to do? Yeah, I was like, I whatever. Mean, this concrete jungle the, will still be here. Yeah. yeah, you're building the life you want. We only get one of it. Can't, mm-hmm. cannot fault you at it at, it, at all. You fire. say that into the <laughs> microphone, Chris. You say it into the microphone. <laughs> yes. Oh, my God. It's like inspiring. Thank you. Do you have, do you have yeah. any, like, because pole is, like, kind of, like, the center of your life. Do you have other hobbies or anything else artistic or non-artistic that you do a lot, too? Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I really love collaging, like, collaging practices. So I, um, I essentially just, like, really love collecting a lot of images and then, like, distorting, manipulating the images and creating, like, compositional works. Um, so that's like a huge part of my own artistic practice um, that I really love. I mean, even though aerial pole is very similar to pole to me, like that also feels like such a different world. And so it's like right now I felt very excited to like dive into that work. I also like love going to the park when it's summer and doing handstands because I'm like not good at them and I'm just trying to be better. And it's just like so fun. So, like, like I just I constantly like um being involved in in things that like kind of feed that artistic side um, or like that physically rigorous like demanding side um, and like diving into that. Um, I used to teach yoga, like power vinyasa yoga for a long time. So I do a lot of like yoga practice, um, yoga practice. Uh, I don't know, I, I'm constantly trying to do different things. Like yesterday or two days ago, I went to like the bar across the street with my honey and like we we like sketched and I like drew stick figures and he drew this like beautiful like piece and I was like Jesus Christ uh, like I don't know I really like doing things like I'll sometimes like I don't know do something super outside my comfort zone like I don't know taking like a, a commercial hip-hop class <laughs> like there's like things like that that's still in the world that I'm operating in but something that feels like completely different um is really fun um but yeah you guys I gotta I gotta roll into the city soon so I gotta I think I gotta hop off soon unfortunately I know I was just noticing it we've been we've been talking for an hour but we, we could probably talk for like 20 more hours but I know it's <laughs> been so much fun it's been so much fun yes thank you so much for taking the time out and talking with us this morning and yeah. it was so amazing to learn all about you <laughs> you're so sweet it's been such so much fun it's been such a blast <laughs> thank you so much it truly was such a pleasure and I Oh my God, I hope we could dance again soon. That's really cool. We will. Don't you worry, Chris. I'm going to get you to New York. I'm going to put you on an aerial pole. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Bring all your skin cells. Bring all your skin cells. Uh, I am ready. If I need to, I'll gain weight for more skin cells. I'll do whatever I need. <laughs> yes. More surface area. Incredible. Yeah. <laughs> well, you guys are amazing. I hope I, I see you both soon. Um, thank you for taking the time also to invite me to do this. This has been a really fun experience. Um, and your space is like so special. I had such a fun time teaching workshops there. And so hope to be back again soon. Um, thank you so yeah. much. Yes, for sure. <laughs> Absolutely. Have a good one, you guys. Have an awesome <laughs> Saturday. Thank Bye, you. Honey. you too. <laughs> <laughs> Should we, we do a sign up? <laughs> That's okay. We can still do a sign off. So that was the amazing Donna Cardo. Oh my God. We had so much fun. I can't believe an hour passed already, y'all. That was so much fun. I... <laughs> that was amazing. She was so, so awesome. And I learned so much. And I'm going to like take what she, she said about her training and like put it to use in the studio too. Because especially about what she said about holding on and letting go when you're on the pole too because I don't think about that yeah she's very like body aware and it's very inspiring like it's so cool yeah well thanks everyone for watching <laughs> stick around for our commentary after and of course for yeah. our sign off <laughs> hey! oh, I, no! I, I do not <laughs> 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 Bye, y'all.